Hey friends, how's it going? Today, I want to spend some time talking about DeepSeek and what I think it means for the industry. You may find what I have to say pretty surprising, so stick around to the end. I guarantee you will learn something new. If you're new to this channel, my name is Johnny and I'm a software engineer at Meta. I currently work on a lot of applied AI at work. I was actually on the team that launched the first Meta AI chat experience on Messenger back in Connect 2023. So I've been kind of working on the space since all of the initial craze over ChatGPT. So I would say I have some context around all of this AI news. So before we get into my thoughts, let me give you a bit of a background on what DeepSeek is and why I think it's such a big deal. DeepSeek is a Chinese AI company that recently released a reasoning model called DeepSeek R1. And surprisingly, it was able to beat a lot of the top AI companies in common benchmarks like Math500 and Bench. On top of that, the company announced that they trained the model with only $5.58 million. And the runtime cost is estimated to be around 20 to 50 times cheaper than a lot of their leading reasoning models. They also released a free chat app that hit number one on the App Store very quickly. So by all counts, they pulled out some amazing work that shocked the entire tech industry. This entire week has been like a roller coaster for a lot of major tech companies, including Nvidia, which lost up to 17% of its stock price in a single day. It's crazy. Overall, I would say it's been a very busy week in the world of AI. So what's my thoughts on all of this? I took some time and I broken down my thoughts into a few sections. Nvidia and like kind of the infra stack. What does DeepSeek mean for major AI players like Google, Meta, and you know, OpenAI, of course. And finally, what should consumers do? So let's get down to it. First off, Nvidia and the stock market. In my opinion, I think the market has dramatically overreacted when they started selling off Nvidia. Now there's an argument to be said that Nvidia was always a little overpriced, but selling off all these semiconductor companies, I don't think was is very smart. The big theory on why all of this is happening is that since it costs less to train these models and there's a more efficient ways to do it, the demand for Nvidia chips will drop dramatically. At least that's what the high level thesis is. And this is why people are rushing to selling off Nvidia. However, like I said, I think this is a huge overreaction and I think there's a lot of reasons to it. First off, there's something called Jevons Paradox, which suggests that increased efficiency often leads to increased use, not less. And in this current environment where major tech companies are essentially racing to build bigger GPU clusters and more data centers all over the world, there's no way they're going to pump the brakes on buying Nvidia H100s just because someone else found a more efficient way to train and run the models. Instead, they'll probably just learn from what DeepSeek did since it's all open source and just make improvements to their own processes. So ultimately, I think the big companies will be able to replicate a lot of what DeepSeek has done. What that ultimately means is that Nvidia is gonna be just doing fine. You know, people are gonna continue buying Nvidia chips. Finally, there is also these claims that DeepSeek basically use a technique called distillation to achieve success. And what distillation means is they took a large base model from like OpenAI, most likely, and they essentially trained on the outputs of OpenAI's like O1 models. So what this kind of means at a high level is that in order to have a model like DeepSeek R1, you actually needed a model like OpenAI's O1 model uh, for you to be able to distill from. That means that you still need these large and expensive models to continue moving the needle. So models like O1 and O3 is still going to be very important for the AI industry. You know, O3 and then whatever the next model is, maybe it's O4 and Google as well, right? Like Gemini and Meta as Llamas, all of these like core foundational models that cost a lot of money to train, we're still going to need those models. So overall, Nvidia, I think that whole infrastructure stack will continue to do fine and it's still very safe. Now the next big topic in my mind is what should other companies be doing now and what should they be focusing? Of course, the first thing is learn from what DeepSeek has done and try to mimic it or take the best learnings and then incorporate it into their work streams and workflows. And I think they've already been doing that. There's been many rumors about war rooms and etc. in the tech industry where people are just uh, trying to dissect it. Now the other 
like kind of key thing to all of this is that I've long since thought that AI model quality or like the size of the model will not be a single differentiator. Everyone will ultimately have basically the similar model qualities in the end. But in my opinion, AI dominance will again, once again, be a battle of user experience. The applications and the ecosystems that these AI companies will essentially be the one that wins the war at the end of the day. So in my opinion, I think large companies will continue to improve their dominance in terms of this like wider ecosystem. And that's essentially the moat, right? Like how many people are actually using your products? What are the feature sets that will keep them there? And at the end of the day, I think companies that learn from all of this experience and keep moving forward will be the ones that come out on top. I definitely expect the competition will keep heating up and I don't think I would want it any other way. It's been really exciting to see all of these progress. As a rule of thumb, I try not to use apps that directly send like my user data to China. Uh, which is like one of the main reasons why I don't use TikTok. I have my own reasons for it, but overall, I believe there's no such thing as a free lunch. And when we use DeepSeek via their mobile app or web app, we're paying for it with our data. So instead, if you still want to use DeepSeek, I recommend you running it locally, if it's possible. Not everyone has amazing machines, but you could also use like something like Grok or Replicate to host your own version of the model. So let me know in the comments if you want a tutorial on how to do something like that. But yeah, there's a lot of ways to run DeepSeek without sending your data to China. Overall, I feel like the DeepSeek engineers have accomplished something truly amazing, which is why I'm so excited about like this space. We're still so very early in this AI journey. And the fact that like small AI companies could still upset the major tech companies is it's like a huge deal. It's a big deal. I'm looking forward to continue to learning about all of this as it unfolds, but that's it. That's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed my thoughts on DeepSeek. Thanks for watching and leave me a like and don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you on the next video.